Good morning, everyone. This is Royce Miller coming back at you with not quite a let's try. Happy April Fools, everyone. And yes, that is the April Fools joke. There is no let's try. There is no video. Well, there is a video, but not a video where I try something. No, no, no. Because that would be a because the greatest prank of all is no prank at all. Yes, instead I'll just be trying some well, not trying. I'll be drinking some of my brother's lovely coffee. I believe this is an espresso mix. But uh whew, this coffee smells like shit. Cheers. It's a bit nutty. What brand is this anyway? Oh. Oh. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of Film Foodie, where I try food from film, television, video games, etc. And today on the docket we have ba -da -ba -ba! Fat Bastard Stool Sample. <laughs> Not really, but kind of. So, this is a video I've wanted to do forever. I literally bought the props for it in December of last year. All for this moment, this glorious moment of drinking shit coffee. In that it is both coffee that is shit and tastes like shit. Now, this was the easy part. Austin Powers, Powers ha drinks his coffee out of uh, a Union Jack mug. Easy to find on Amazon. This was slightly harder. I actually had to tap the wonderful folks of the prop making subreddit to find out what this was. We see Fat Bastard Stool Sample held in a... Uh, container that looks very strange and scientific. It turns out this is a gravy separator. Found one on eBay that was about the appropriate size. And yeah, I'm still drinking the stool sample. And you'll, you'll probably be like, Royce, that's regular coffee. You couldn't have possibly actually made it look like a... Or you couldn't have possibly actually made it out of actual shit. Pardon my French. Look, there's this is an Austin Powers themed episode. There's gonna be a lot of swearing. I'm sorry. Mother effers. This is PG-13, so we're not saying the f bomb. Uh, I got the civet poop coffee. For this one bit, for this one single bit, I got this stupid, asinine, wild Luwak coffee. And this is supposed to be the real stuff. It tastes like normal coffee to me, but at least this one does. But it's doctored with my brother's Italian sweet cream creamer. I'm sorry, Joe. Originally, I was going to have my brother here for this, but I figured, like, eh, it's better to just film it myself. So, yeah. For those who don't know what Wild Luwak coffee is, what Luwak coffee is. Okay, so, the Copa Luwak is a cat-like creature, uh, I think it's related to civets, that lives in, I believe, Indonesia. It eats coffee berries, and its digestive tract does something to, like, purify the berries or something. And so it just poops out coffee beans. People catch them, dry them, sell them. Now, there's unfortunately a bit of a problem with civet coffee being made, or with Luet coffee being made with uh, captured civets who were force-fed the coffee berries. 
Well, that's why I specifically went for one that said that it's wild caught. Now, that could still be false advertising. Unfortunately, I can't verify. But I did the bare minimum. So, you know. Shit coffee. You may have heard of it if you ever watched the film. Uh, uh, the, 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 what is it called? The Bucket List, duh. Now, it's not fair to try this very expensive rare coffee undoctored, or doctored up so much with, with Coffee Mate sweet cream. So I do have a regular cup here of just the coffee. Very bitter. Like, I'm not a coffee drinker, so I can't really tell you, like, the notes or anything of this. It just tastes like bitter, gross water. Ugh. Ew. Well, it does taste like shit. This is coffee that I'm supposed to, apparently this is coffee that I'm supposed to like stir into my, so this is coffee that I'm supposed to put in the bottom of my cup, pour hot water in, and then just drink it like a, I think like a Turkish coffee does that. Shoot. I explained why it's so watery. The beans have not had time to express themselves. The grounds, I mean. This is basically instant coffee with extra steps, and I tried to treat it like regular coffee by putting it through the coffee maker. Well, poop. Also, this thing is a terrible coffee pourer. I don't know if you could tell from my thing, but it's like... It drips a lot. Luckily, I'm wearing a shirt that I don't like wearing to work anymore, so. I love this thing. I wore this for the Austin Powers video because it looks so gaudy and dumb. <clears throat> so yeah, I I flubbed it up, in, but hey, watery shit is kind of the whole point of the drink, isn't it? And I think I did manage to get the the uh, look of it. Well, it's... Because, okay. I think it's time I go over my history with Austin Powers and the film itself. So, the scene I am aping. Austin is in... It goes into the, labor, the laboratory. There is a coffee pot full of coffee next to this. Full of... Because they had just gotten... Because they... Because, uh... Fat bastard, they they stuck a tracker up his butt, but he pooped it out. So he um so he uh hold on, how so so they were analyzing his stool, which I'm not even sure if they had like DNA testing and stuff. Back in the 60s, they might have. Because, like, in Austin Powers 2, it takes place primarily in the 60s, because Austin Powers goes back in time. So, like, he's technically... He, so, like, he's... There are two Austins at the moment. There's the one that's frozen and is going to be thawed out in the 90s, and then there's the 90s Austin who was taken back. There was an oil spill and a flock of seagulls. That's about it. Imagine... Minimizing the eighty, the seventies and eighties as an oil spill and a band. <clears throat> and again, that does sound very Austin Powersy to just focus on music. I forgot to say, see, like those movies are obsessed with Elvis Costello and Burt Bacharach. Um. Anyway, so they're analyzing the stool sample. Austin is trying to make himself a cup of coffee. He gets distracted by Basil, reaches for the wrong, the wrong, uh, you know, container. 
And so he says, so he takes a sniff of his cup and says, Ooh, this coffee smells like shit. Basil, exposition, uh, looks behind him at the stool sample and says, It is shit, Austin. Austin says, Oh, so it's not just me then. Takes a drink, and everyone in the, the, the lab is like, Ugh. And he's like, It is a bit nutty, isn't it? It's like, Oh, oh, no, no, no. I saw this movie in third grade. I was, I, like, that is the best time to watch an Austin Powers movie. Because, like, you, you need a juvenile sense of humor. Don't get me wrong, the films do have some funny stuff for adults. Like, um, Austin's, Austin accidentally letting his mask slip a little and being like, Oh, I'm glad those capitalist dogs finally got what was coming to them, eh? And then Basil Exposition tells him, Austin, we won. And Austin's like, oh, uh, yay capitalism. <laughs> Which, you know, that is that is a very, like, 60s socialist thing, you know. Uh, although, it, it could also just be that Austin was willing to play both sides, because, again, he is a spy. He is the international man of mystery, after all. Um, so, yeah, that's the basic of it. <clears throat> to imitate... The coffee drank by Mike Myers in, in teeth and a wig. I, it, I, you know, I used the civet poop coffee. And, like, there... I think Austin Powers gets a bad rap, because a lot of 90s comedies don't age well. The most infamous example is Ace Ventura, which has a very, like, transphobic uh, twist at the end where it's revealed that the villain uh, was a dude the whole time and had gotten plastic surgery to look like a woman. But also that is kind of a noir thing. You have the crying game, you have Psycho. You know, it's like the femme fatale is not a femme at all, is weirdly prevalent in that subculture. Um, oh lord, it's, coffee does not sit well with me. It's shit that'll make you take a shit, pardon my... Again, I'm sorry about the swearing, but this... We're, we're, you're watching a video about Austin Powers poop coffee. Like, if, if, you, if you're expecting anything else, you, you, you're, you're just in for a bad time. And I know the people who watch me specifically to eat stuff are really disappointed because they're like, oh, Royce isn't eating anything. He's not drinking any pop. Like, come on, people. This is a film foodie. I, well, I mean, or, or this is about discussing a, a prop food, or in this case, prop drink. I, I like doing... And, like, for, for, the reason I chose this is because it's a fun... It's, it's a fun one because I like pranking myself more than the audience. You know, like... Or at least pretending to prank myself, where I go, Whoa! Like, last year when I did the... When I did, did the propped up of the fireman helmet that was actually... That I thought that was supposed to be a flash helmet. Um... <laughs> But this year, I'm forcing myself to drink coffee, which I hate coffee. So it's already some. Here, let's take another sip of the bitters of the bitter uh, water. Ugh! It tastes. You know what it tastes like because there's it's so watery. It tastes like burnt tea. It tastes like someone made really bad tea and overcooked it. Oh my god! You know what it reminds me of? Okay, when I was a kid. My grandma Cindy used to put these pitchers of of iced tea out, and she would just let them steep for days and days. And like when you got to the bottom of it, it was so bitter that it was just it tasted funky. That's what this tastes like, except it's hot. Well, I mean like room temperature now, but Ugh. 
Anyway, I don't know if I've ever told this story before, but Austin Powers actually got me in trouble. Actually, I think I have told the story before, but it's worth repeating because we are here. Um, so I've always been a fat kid. Um, I was literally born overweight. I think I was like nine or ten pounds. Um, and that was not my mom's fault. Like, she, 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 she got her pregnant, she got pregnancy cravings, but she managed to maintain a decent weight throughout her entire pregnancy, so I was just a big kid. Um, and of course, you know, that continued on through my life. I was a picky eater as a kid, I didn't enjoy stuff too much, you know, I was, I was the kind of person who would be like, oh, I wanna, I wanna eat this, I wanna... I don't want to eat that. You know, throw a fit. No matter how my parents tried to disguise the food, I would always sniff it out. Like, they once tried to feed me mashed cauliflower as mashed potatoes, and I was like, these taste disgusting. Get them out of my face. Anyway. That summer, we were staying with our grandma Cindy and Grandpa George. Uh, politically, the exact opposite of me, but... Well, not the exact guy, but, you know, politically opposed to me, but nowadays. But two of the nicest, kindest, funnest people you'd ever meet. Um, it still makes me sad that one of my grandpa's last acts on this earth was voting for Donald Trump. He passed away in early 2017. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, I... So, okay. No, he passed away in 2018. What, what the fuck am I saying? I'm stupid. I'm really stupid. Um. Uh, anyway, what do I say? Okay, so, third grade. I'm in line at the water fountain. And during oh, over the summer, my grandparents showed us Lost Powers of Spider Shag Me. And it was the funniest thing we'd ever seen. And we got introduced to the character of Fat Bastard. Now, they didn't treat his name as a swear word. They treated it as his name. It's similar to Octopussy where, like, you know, it's supposed to... The, the joke is that it's, like, a really, really crass name, but they take it so unironically. He is a Fat Bastard, and his name is Fat Bastard. Which makes me wonder, like, is Fat his first name? <laughs> he, you know, he's Fat Bastard of the Highland of the Highland Bastards. <laughs> it would not surprise me to find out that there is a Scottish family called the Bastard, because you know, Scots are the one group you could make fun of, and nothing you say could be more weird than what is actually true. Oh, you know, Scots they. Their, 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 their cuisine is so disgusting. They they take all a bunch of, like, sheep organs and shove it in its stomach with oats. Haggis. You know, like, oh, Scots, they're a bunch of, you know, dumb motherfuckers. They they wear skirts with with no underwear. Kilts. Oh, Scots. They, they, they don't know how to do... They don't know how to invent the sport. You, you know what their kind of sport would be? Trying to hit a ball into a hole from a mile away. Golf. You know, like, nothing you say could be as ridiculous as the reality of the situation. Anyway. So, my... Now, the problem is, I am in... I am second going on third grade. So, like, nine... Yeah, I think nine years old. Let's So, that'd be like... Oh, Lord, hold on. Third grade. Okay, so kindergarten's five to six. First grade's six to seven. Second grade, seven to eight. Third grade, eight to nine. Okay, I was eight years old. Now, I didn't had never heard Bastard until that movie. Which is weird, because if you knew the men in my family, it's kind of strange that we never heard that term before. Um, and no one sat me down and explained to me that bastard was a bad word. So, I am in line at the drinking fountain. 
in third grade. And the girl behind me says, why are you so fat? Or something like that. And I say, and I say defensively, I'm not as fat as fat bastard. And she rats me out to the teacher, the bitch. And the teacher being a bitch, fuck you, Mrs. Sims, you took, or, or you fat phobic piece of shit, makes me go to the principal's office because I said a bad word. Not the girl who was being mean to me. No, 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 no. Me, who said a word that I did not know was a swear word, went to the principal's office. I swear Glenwood was responsible for some of my worst memories and hired some truly despicable teachers. Like, don't get me wrong, there were some lovely people who continue to inspire me to this day just through my memory of them. Shout out to Mr. Dozen and Mrs. Isidore. You were two of the best people I ever met. And to Mr. Deichler. And, but, uh, a fuck you to Mrs. Brame, Mrs. Sims... A, a tepid fuck you to, to Mrs. Haleska, who had piercing, cold blue eyes that stared into your soul. She was an attractive woman, fresh out of, out of teaching school. But being a fifth grader, she was the scariest motherfucker on the planet. Pardon my French. Caffeine does weird things. Like, this much caffeine does weird things to me. <sighs> anyway. So my mom hated, my mom was so pissed off at both me and my grandparents that she basically forbid Austin Powers from ever being mentioned in our household again. We can't watch it. We can't talk about it. Nothing. Unfortunately for her, one of my biggest quotes as a kid came from that movie. Wait a tick. I said that over and over again as a kid. And as if, but... So, despite this, we went to see fucking, pardon my French again, we went to see Austin Powers 3 at the drive-in, at the Council of drive-in. I think it was playing alongside Triple uh, X or Transporter 2, one of those movies, and my mom did find Diesel and Statham attractive, so she's like, eh, the, kid, the kids will like Austin Powers, and we'll watch the action movie. <laughs> And Austin Powers 3 might be the best, like, Austin Powers 3 may be, like, the most, not, like, uh, how to say this, the one that combines both funny and heart the best. Because, like, the first Austin Powers is more about, like, Austin being a fish out of water in the 1960s. The second Austin Powers is... A lot more joke based. It's very machine gun. Bam, bam, joke, joke, joke. Um. Well, whereas the third film kind of reaches a very happy medium where you you, you do have that the, where where you do have kind of that rapid fire joke telling, and but it also has a lot more heart because it's about Austin reconnecting with his father who was always absent in his life and it also has Foxy Cleopatra played to perfection by Beyonce like people talk about like oh celebrity cameos suck like they don't always suck you just have to use them right and uh Beyonce as like this 70s disco diva is perfect and then of course you had another uh Mike Myers playing every single char character in his movie with him playing Goldmember. In fact, I joke that uh, the only thing problematic about Austin Powers 3 is the movie in the movie. Because it's got Tom Cruise. It's got Kevin Spacey. It's got John Travolta. When you have two Scientologists and a, and a guy who allegedly did some bad things, you know, that's... Ugh. But at least it had Danny DeVito as mini-me. R.I.P. Vern Troyer. Oh my god, Vern Troyer hitting on Beyonce. But the funniest one in that... The funniest joke in that movie was probably the shadow stuff. Because uh, I think the funniest film... The funniest scene in both movies is the shadow stuff. Because it's a visual joke that's easily readable to the audience. 
<laughs> so the first one has Heather Graham uh, as Felicity Shagwell pull, pulling stuff out of a canvas sack, but the Dr. Evil's henchmen see it as her pulling stuff out of his rectum, <laughs> including a gerbil, which, like, when was the whole, like, when was that joke a bit? When was the Richard, what is his fucking name? What when was the Richard Gear gerbil story really in circulation? Because it had to have been petered out by 99 when they put it in Austin Powers, the spy who shagged me. <laughs> and then she accidentally gets, let's go of a, of a smoke bomb and like, it's <laughs> like so you see, I spray out his butt. Like, it's so dumb, but it gets me to this day. You know, like, th this is the kind of stuff that inspired the silly stuff like Machinima's Gamer Poop. You know, you would not have, like, you, you, you would not have Commander Shepard going, well, bang, okay, if you didn't have dumb stuff like that in the 80s and 90s. <sighs> anyway, so in the third film, Austin and Minnie sneak aboard Dr. Evil's submarine, and, <laughs> and, uh, so, and they share a uniform with Austin sitting on Minnie shoulders, because that's the funny one. And, and um, they're trying to figure out a way where they can get a physical while still pretending to be one person. And so, like, while they're while they're uh, doing all this stuff, uh, one of Doctor Evil's henchmen is looking at them through the through like a privacy divider and sees like Mini Me <laughs> doing all this. But he'd be like, you know, maybe he's sticking his hand out of Austin's groin to pretend to be, like, so it looks like it's his dick being a hand. And then, and then when the doctor finally catches them and says, put your, you know, holds them at gunpoint saying, put your hands up, Austin does this, and Minnie Me is strapped to his chest, so he falls down with a bunch of water. So it looks like he's giving birth to Minnie Me. <laughs> Henchmen, like, these would be okay on their own, but it's the henchmen's reactions that really sell the bit. Like, give it up for that nameless extra, because he is perfect. He he really sold that scene. I think that's, I think that's where Austin Powers excels, is that, like, the joke only works when you have a reaction. You know, Austin Powers drinking poop coffee. Funny, but excelled to put up to 11 when he does it in the middle of this high-tech lab full of people, <laughs> including the guy who played D'Artagnan in, like, this... He played, like, D'Artagnan, and I think he also played Tybalt. Yeah, oh, God, I had to watch that Romeo and Juliet. That Romeo and Juliet movie effing sucked. I don't like Shakespeare, and... It really, and like, I really don't like adaptations of Shakespeare. The only Shakespeare adaptation I like is probably Lion King. Um, anyway. I have been on the horn for 28 minutes now. Good lord. Rambling, cussing, being a genuine nuisance. So I shall leave you all for now. You all have a wonderful day. This is Royce Miller. I am having way too much energy right now. Good. I gotta go pick up Magic the Gathering cards. Look forward to that video. I'm out of Sayonara. Run! It's Godzilla! Technically due to international copyright laws. No, it isn't. Still, we should run like it is Godzilla. Even though it's not. Pikachu was also in that movie as like a costume character. Bye.